in value studies, there there is nothing that will look like a line. So there's no point in even talking about line weight, but occasionally you might have something like guitar strings or uh, threads or wires or something like that. So here I've intentionally included that uh, cable from the mouse to cover line weight as well. My initial gesture drawing only takes up to a minute and I prefer to start with line gesture. It's just a personal preference. You can use mass gesture too. Mass gesture is more appropriate for value studies. Uh, if you do use line gesture, you're going to have to blend those lines out and, and make them disappear into the edges of the objects. In this case, uh, with this color of paper, which is a lot lighter than the blue paper I used last time, I'm using uh, charcoal first instead of the white Conte because there's going to be more in my drawing that's dark than, uh, than light things. So I'm skipping through in this drawing. I'm not showing you everything because we've already covered value studies, so you really don't need more instruction on this. You can always refer to my previous videos on value. I'm more concerned with going over the depth cues and showing you how to do that. So here's one of my four depth cues. I'm already addressing value. Here I've decided to make the entire foreground a little bit darker in order to create more depth and, and make it look like the background is kind of receding into space. So the value should be darker in the foreground, lighter in the background. I decided that um, the blending wasn't quite as uh, smooth with just a stump for the background. So here I'm using the chamois to blend out the background, which goes a lot faster. It's a larger surface. And uh, the chamois also serves to lighten the background, creating more of that depth. Even though the cup doesn't have uh, texture or small parts or anything like that, the detail in the shadows is what I'm paying attention to. So if I really wanted to make that cup look as realistic as possible, I would go in and pay attention to every change of every shadow and highlight. But in this case, uh, in order to create more depth in my drawing, I've decided to make the cup a little bit more generic, a little blurrier and not quite as detailed so that I can pay more attention to the objects in the foreground and put a lot more detail in those. The stapler is in the center, so it's going to have more detail than the cup, and I am paying attention to things like reflections, making sure the values are accurate. Um, I'm doing a lot to the stapler. But I'm going to get even more detailed with the few objects that are in the foreground. Now when I blended out my background, I lost that cord from the mouse and I uh, have to put it back in, which is not a huge deal. I'd rather have a smooth background than have it kind of break up. Here I'm starting with the shadow from that cord. The shadow is going to blend into the background, so I'm going to add that first so that I don't have to touch it afterwards. Then I'm adding the darkest areas of the cord. So here I'm using charcoal and um, and then I'm erasing out the highlights. So I'm not going to use any white. That cord was a pretty dark gray, so the highlights will still be kind of a light gray. Here I'm including line weight. So if you look at the cord all the way near the mouse, it's a lot thicker than what's all the way in the background falling off of the table. So I've added a lot of detail to the mouse and now I'm working on the post-it notes and the sharpie. I've decided to make the post-its even lighter than they were visibly because I wanted to create that contrast between the sharpie and the post-its. I've also darkened the shadow next to the post-its. That creates some contrast too and it creates a darker value. But then I've lightened the, the post-it notes. 